If the Mai Tai is the most famous tiki cocktail, the zombie is the most infamous. Aloha folks, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I hope you enjoyed last week's show with McBiff. That was the most fun thing I think that we've ever done on the show. I, I sincerely hope you watched it. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it. It's, I mean, it's really good. And the cocktail's great too. So I've been getting a lot of questions about why we've kind of fallen off the list. We were going good, and then I jumped down to the last rights, and then we jumped over to, what the hell is that? Oh, that's a hole. Something must have been eating it. Uh, then we did the Mihana. Tonight we're gonna do the zombie. Now the reason for this is there's so much great tiki content as far as recipes go that I didn't want to be tied to one thing. I thought it was a cool concept, but I think this is better to be able to explore a little bit more. So I'm sure we will still be doing a lot of the classic cocktails that happen to be on the Total Tiki app, but we will not be uh, going in the order or with the mission of trying to do the whole thing. So I hope you stick with us because there's still a ton 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 of content but if i was going to end the total tiki app there is one cocktail that has resurfaced and just as the mai tai recipe has been bastardized a billion times so has the zombie recipe so the reason that i want to end the beach bum berry segment of this uh video series with the zombie is because beach bum berry was absolutely instrumental in discovering the missing ingredient it was an ingredient called Don's Mix. So Don the Beachcomber liked to code his recipes so that a bartender that he hired wouldn't necessarily be able to go off to another bar but bring his recipes with him and then all of a sudden you're serving Don the Beachcomber cocktails at another bar. And it, I think that's so important because I remember growing up um, in Newport Beach, people would drive all the way to the Royal Hawaiian for the Lapu Lapu. And it was kind of a testament to me that people will travel for a really good cocktail. And actually there's a restaurant bar by my house called Memphis that serves incredible food, very good cocktails, but I used to go there all the time just for the blood and sand. Until one day I asked one of the bartenders, hey, like, uh, what are the ingredients to this? And they told me. And then I started making it at home. And it was like, I didn't feel the need to go to that bar as much, you know, just for that cocktail. So there's kind of a lesson to be learned there. So there's a huge, big, long story in Beach Bum Berry Sip and Safari about the zombie. I mean, it's like six or seven pages long. It was like Indiana Jones un uncovering the Holy Grail, you know what I mean? He, This was the cocktail that kicked off the whole tiki, maybe the mixology revolution. I mean, there's like nine ingredients to this thing. I would imagine that this is probably the most intricate cocktail that, well, for 1934, I, I would imagine for sure. It's so funny too because Beach Bum Berry explains that Don Beach used to say the way that he came up with this cocktail is that a hungover businessman came into his place and he had this business meeting that he had to get through and he's like, you gotta, you gotta make something for me. And maybe it's because he felt like a zombie or maybe because Don knew that uh, like the, the overproof rum would turn him into a zombie. The funny thing about that story is that he's like, yeah, I just whipped this thing up, fixed up the customer, he was off to his business meeting. And uh, when you look at the quantities and proportions of this cocktail, there's no way he was just flagrantly mixing stuff. Like, it's really well balanced. It's like a, it's like the perfect cocktail. Don also um, had a penchant for storytelling and um, the lore behind the cocktails. So I think that's probably kind of more realistic. I think that he probably spent a lot of time on this cocktail. But in 1934, word got out around Hollywood Word got around to the newspapers. I think word spread everywhere that you could come into this place and order this uh, incredible cocktail, but you could only have two because it was such a dangerous cocktail. You know, again, another reason to go to Don the Beachcomber, another reason to, to be enchanted, to take the challenge to go, oh yeah, only two? I can, man, I can drink two of those. I can drink three of those. Uh, might be a bad idea. I'm super excited to get into the cocktail that kicked off the tiki cocktail craze and probably my favorite tiki cocktail. Ooh, that's a tough thing to say. So with that, let's get started on Don the Beachcomber's original 1934 zombie recipe. For this cocktail, we will be using lime, Bacardi 8 gold Puerto Rican rum, Hamilton 151 overproof rum. Back in the late 90s, early 2000s, it was really hard to come by 
a 151 Demerara. So Lemon Heart was the one. And then it, it vanished for a while. And kind of so did zombies. Like, you couldn't make them. Then Lemon Heart came back. And from what I understand and what I've read, uh, the recipe just... It just didn't taste the same. So then Ed Hamilton tried to buy Lemon Heart 151, I think. is I think that's the story. And uh, he wanted them to make it the way that they used to make it. And they wouldn't do it or something. And so he's like, oh yeah, I'll do it myself. So this is supposed to be pretty faithful to the original Lemon Heart flavor profile. The recipe calls for Falernum, which was homemade by my friend Liz. Angostura bitters, grenadine, Mephisto absinthe, and the missing ingredient. When Beach Bum Berry found the original recipe for the cocktail, it had all those ingredients listed out. And then there was a half an ounce of a mystery ingredient called Don's Mix. You'll have to read it in the book, the whole story, because it, it is really interesting. You wouldn't think that a, a book about like how cocktails came about would be all that compelling, but it really is interesting, especially if you like tiki cocktails. Well, I guess only if you like tiki cocktails. The missing ingredient was called Don's Mix, half an ounce, but that half an ounce was enough to, to influence the whole flavor profile of the cocktail. So after some research and digging, and that part of the story is really interesting, they came to find out that the recipe for Don's Mix was two to one grapefruit juice to cinnamon syrup. So there it is. The recipe has been unlocked. Let's make it. I'm super thirsty. As always, we're gonna start with the fruit juice because the fruit juice uh, is cheaper if you screw it up. So, squeezer. And it is three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And as always, you wanna be super precise with tiki cocktails because like even a quarter of an ounce can really screw things up. All right, half an ounce of Falernum. There's half an ounce. A dash of bitters. What is this vine doing? One teaspoon of grenadine. Now we're using small hands grenadine. This stuff is absolutely incredible. Do not use the syrupy, like neon red grenadine. There's a wild, wild taste difference. Like for real. So get this stuff. Ooh, look at this, brand new bottle. All right, and I'm gonna measure this out over my little mixing cup here because I don't want to accidentally put too much into here. You get me? Like say I accidentally poured too much, it would spill into it. Uh, that's how precise you have to be with tiki cocktails. And then six drops of absinthe. And the way that I do this, I, I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not. Where's my dropper? So the way that I do this, all right, so I tilt the bottle and I suck some up and then I just go, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six drops. This stuff, this is strong. This will destroy your cocktail, so really be precise with that. All right, now we're gonna make Dawn's mix. Let me rinse this out. We're gonna make the ingredient that haunted Beach Bum Berry for all those years. And really this cocktail would be lost forever if it wasn't for the discovery of this mystery ingredient. So, white grapefruit. Okay, so that's two ounces right there. Um, we are gonna make it in this little jar. I should strain it. So that's four ounces of white grapefruit juice. And the other day I made this cinnamon syrup and I uh, there's a recipe, well there's a recipe on the Total Tiki app. So to make the cinnamon syrup, you crush three cinnamon sticks, mix that as it's heating up, you let it cool and then you let it infuse and then you put that thing in the refrigerator. Refrigerator. And then you put that thing in the refrigerator and uh, there you go, cinnamon syrup. It kind of smells like department stores at Christmas time. Tasty. So we did four ounces of white grapefruit juice. That means we're gonna do two ounces of cinnamon syrup. Okay. And then we're gonna mix that with the grapefruit juice. And then put the top back on this guy. Shake it up. And then after all that, all we need is half an ounce of this mixture. So this is the secret. This is what they would make off-site 
and then bring it in and go, yeah, this is Don's mix. You don't know what's in it. But now we do. We do. Thanks, Jeff Berry. Okay, we'll add that in. Now let's get to the rums. As I said, this cocktail was limit two per customer. And in fact, my mom told me a story about how she was on a blind date in probably like 1962 in Marina Del Rey at the Don the Beachcomber. She said that she passed out in her meal because she had zombies. <laughs> I don't know if she ever wanted that to go public, but um, it's a funny story. And we've all had our moments with uh, drinking too much. Hey, Bacardi, how about loosening up on your seals here? Dude, seriously? Let me in, you bastard. All right, get off there. Bacardi usually freaks me out because it has like a bad reputation of being like a horrible rum. But everybody says Bacardi 8's like the good stuff. So it's sweet and it doesn't, it's not too sharp. Tasty. All right, so one and a half ounces of that. One and a half ounces of dark Jamaican rum and recommended was this plantation. So another brand new bottle. Exciting, huh? By the way, this series is costing me a fortune in all kinds of rum, but it's kind of fun too. So hmm. I like that one. Man, that smells so good. This is one and a half ounces of this. So already we're at three ounces of rum. That's like, that should be it. For most tiki cocktails, it's about three ounces. Oh, wow. That smells way more sugary. And then this is the kicker right here. One ounce of 151. All brand new bottle tonight. It's like some kind of uh, Spikes Breezeway cocktail hour record. So dumb. I also like that these are all corks. I once had cocktails with uh, Ed Hamilton at the Blind Rabbit. Hmm. He's a nice guy. That smells more like, like syrup. Almost like some kind of maple syrup kind of, kind of thing. It's good. Okay, one ounce of this. All right, so there's the cocktail. And as per most Don the Beachcomber cocktails, we're gonna add ice to this. And then we're gonna hit, we're gonna fire up the old uh, Hamilton Beach mixer over here. So let's get some ice. All right, we're gonna fill this thing up. I try to fill them up about halfway with ice. Um, Beach Bum Berry tells you exactly how much ice you're supposed to put in there. But I think that usually about halfway full of ice does it. Maybe a little more. And this goes back over here. All right, let's fire up the Hamilton Beach here. He always says about five seconds, so you just want to get the thing mixed up, froth it up a little bit, but you don't want to turn it into a Slurpee, you know what I mean? And then, I just got these cocktail glasses this weekend at the Long Beach Swap Meet. Thank God the Swap Meet is back on again. But it's got like this blonde jungle girl bonking this Tarzan dude in the head. So there's the cocktail. And I'm not sure how they were garnished, but we're gonna do a traditional tiki garnish, which is pineapple and cherries. And we're gonna put some mint in there. You just wanna give the mint a little bit of a whack and that releases the oils and man, it really comes to life. And the idea is that this thing, when you come up to take a sip, you're smelling the mint, you're seeing this beautiful garnish here. It's a total sensory experience. So from 1934, the zombie. Okay, here we go, the 1934 zombie. Wow, that is a complex, complex cocktail. You can taste all the layers. You can taste how delicately balanced it is. It's kind of like cinnamon, but, um, but sharp from the rums but not overpowering. That's a very interesting cocktail. And what I love the most about this kind of thing is that, man, can you imagine 
being in Hollywood at Don the Beachcomber in 1934 and sitting at the counter with Howard Hughes and Mae West and sipping on zombies. How rad is that? Like that's really, it's really kind of a special part of American history. You ought to make one of these things for yourself. And let me know in the comments below what you thought of the 1934 zombie. Thanks again to Beach Bumberry for the content up to this point. You should get the Beach Bumberry Total Tiki app. It is well worth the 10 bucks. I hope you join me for more cocktail videos. I do have some more guests coming up. We're gonna dive into my 1947 Trader Vic's cocktail book. Uh, we're gonna make some tiki classics. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So uh, that being said, Coley Maluna. Would Mae West have been there? We gotta, we gotta figure this thing out here. So she died in 1980, okay. Born in 1892? Sheesh. 1892 minus 1934. She would've been 42 then? Mae West. Yeah, she totally could've been there. What about Howard Hughes? Hell, Charlie Chaplin probably was there. Hmm. Born in 1905. So in 1934 he would've been, well, 31 years old? Net worth $1.5 billion, equivalent to $6.74 billion in today's dollars. But I have heard stories about Howard Hughes being a Don the Beachcomber. It's pretty rad. I wonder what would happen if I made two more of these.